Welcome to Biology 2.7. If you're not watching this at lunkintutor.com, please do so as it has a bunch of tutorials and the link will be in the description below. In the beginning of biology, we discussed that biology has diverse organisms, whether they're a hundred feet tall or whether they're several micrometers small. Now, since biology is the study of those living things, we should have a way to observe those living things. And there are things that can't be seen with the naked eye. And that's why the microscope was built. So today in 2.7, we're going to be discussing about the microscope, the different types of microscopes and how the microscope functions. First of all, there were people like Robert Hooke and Anton van Leeuwenhoek who had these really simple microscopes. Well, they were actually simple lenses and it's considered the simplest form of a microscope. Now, what is a microscope? A microscope is something that has the ability to magnify an object. Magnification is the size of the image divided by the size of the object. You need to remember that. The magnification is the size of the image divided by the size of the object. So the compound microscopes we use today have two lenses. The light from the object passes through the first lens and it produces a magnified image. The magnified image which passes through the first lens acts as an object for the second lens and it magnifies the image again instead of having one lens with a huge curvature to pull the image and magnify it like several thousand times it's sent through a lens again and again i'll draw the diagram and you'll get a better understanding of it then and don't worry about understanding how the microscope works properly because in physics, there is a part called optics and during that you'll learn exactly how the microscope functions and how light rays behave during those instances. So let's take an example. If one lens of the compound microscope has a magnification of 10 and the other one has a magnification of 40, the total magnification would be the multiplication of both which would mean a 400 time magnification. Remember the the object is magnified by a certain number of times and it creates an image. That image acts as a different object and it gets magnified again. So let's just get into some physics you should know. One kilometer is a thousand meters and one meter is a hundred centimeters. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. One millimeter is a thousand micrometers and one micrometer is a thousand nanometers. So you need to remember this. A millimeter is 10 to the power minus three meters. A micrometer is 10 to the power minus six meters and a nanometer is 10 to the power minus nine. So let's ask a little question. If the magnification of an object well, of a microscope is 5,000 and it gets an image which is 5 millimeters large. What is the actual size of the object? Now we know that the image is the final product made from the object and the magnification is the amount of times it got multiplied by. So the size of the object would be the size of the image divided by the magnification which would be one micrometer. So there are several things you need to understand in this. One is that the maximum magnification of a light microscope is about 1000 times. That's generally how the microscopes are built. So we're going to talk about something that you've heard. It's called resolution. Probably heard this word in a thousand different places, but can you define it? The minimum distance between two objects to distinguish as distinct is termed resolution power. Now these are the things that you need to remember about resolution. The resolution of the naked eye is 0 0.1 millimeter. The resolution of the light microscope say is around 0 0.2 micrometers and the resolution of the electron microscope is 0 0.2 nanometers. We're going to get into the electron microscope. You don't really need to learn a lot about it. The electron microscope is done with artificial light. It's not done in like a traditional lens. The images are computer generated and we'll go into a little bit of description for that. 
There are generally two types of electron microscopes. One, there are the transmission electron microscopes also known as TEM and the scanning electron microscopes the SEMs and the difference is is that the transmission the TEM is used to study the internal structures of cells and learn various details about that and the thing about the transmission electron microscope is that you need extremely thin specimens to place on the slide the SEM, the scanning electron microscope, can produce 3D models of the surface of a specimen. You need to know how the microscope works. So we'll get into the light microscope extremely briefly because you don't really need to know that much about the electron microscope in our syllabus. Now the light microscope is just two lenses but it has a very limited magnification. We told that it has generally around a thousand at max. It doesn't usually go above 1000 even though you could make it do that but the problem is you can't get an extremely clear image. I mean theoretically otherwise you could just simply put uh, 40 into 40 into 40 into 40 into 40 into 40 into 40 and get a stronger image than that of an electron microscope. So you can see the structure of a light microscope. There is the eyepiece lens and a objective lens. The objective lens usually has a higher power than the eyepiece and it can be switched between lens. So for example, you can say that the eyepiece has a 10 times magnification and the three objectives have uh, 30, 40 and 50. So that way, you that way you can change the magnification by simply rotating the stage. It's called the rotating ob objective lens stage. You need to remember the parts of the microscope the biggest knob is called the course adjustment and it's what you use to get the main focusing and then there's a little knob called the fine adjustment. The fine adjustment is to make to get that details and make sure you have the perfect resolution. And a bunch of clips which are called the stage clips and they are placed on top of the stage. Now when you're placing a specimen you put it in the slide and you lock them into place with the stage clip and there is a condenser and there is a reflecting mirror below that. What the mirror does is it brings light onto the stage or onto the slide so you can observe it. And finally there is the foot of the microscope. Now you need to remember that all these lenses are convex lenses. They're not concave lenses. Convex means that the lens has a curved surface which is curved outwards. So the final thing you need to learn about the light microscope is how you actually study a specimen. It's really simple. There's like five or six steps. You take a clean, dry microscope slide and cover slip. Those are the place the slide and the cover slip are what you put the specimen in. It's generally made out of glass. You take a drop of liquid. It's usually water or you put glycerine. You take the material which is to be mounted onto the center of the slide. You put the material to be observed. It could be a cell or a peel of, let's just take, you put a peel of onion. You take the peel of onion and you put it in the material, in the liquid, without trapping any air bubbles. You need to make sure that there are no air bubbles because if there are air bubbles, you can't really see and it gets really distorted. So you place the cover slip at one end of the slide and you put it at a 45 degree angle. You pull the cover slip along the side and then you press it with the finger and thumb until it reaches the drop of liquid containing the material. Then you take a little needle to support it and you make sure that there are no air bubbles and you slowly lower the cover slip uh, draw off any excess liquid from the cover slip and you are done. You have to make sure that there are no air bubbles and the cover slip isn't completely covered with unwanted liquid. So you have to make sure that's completely clean and you are ready to go. Finally, the very last part is the difference of the light microscope and the electron microscope. So what exactly is the difference between a light microscope and an electron microscope? The light microscope uses a beam of light. The electron microscope uses a beam of electrons. In the light microscope, a glass lens is used to focus the light beam. And in the electron microscope, they use magnetic condensers. Now, one really important part about the light microscope is that it actually shows the 
real colors of the specimen and on the electron microscope it's black and white if you get a colored image that is generally the color is generated by the microscope it's not a real color of the specimen the magnification of the light microscope is around 1000 the magnification of the electron microscope could be anywhere between 150000 to 400000 so there's a big difference there Another interesting thing is that in the light microscope, you can actually observe living specimens, whereas the electron microscope, they have to be dead in order to put them in there. So there's that's one really important feature that you need to realize because that's one thing that the electron microscope can't do. The resolution of the light microscope is 0.2 micrometers. We said that before. And on the electron, it's 0.2 nanometers. So it's a thousand times more. In the light microscope, the image is 2D, and in the electron microscope, using the SEM, the scanning electron microscope, you could get a 3D model. Otherwise, the TEM gives a 2D model. And finally, the light microscope is a lot cheaper than the electron microscope. So with that, we'll complete 2.7. There isn't really much to know. You need to realize that there are two types of microscopes that we generally know about, the light and the electron microscope now the microscope the light microscope with two lenses is called the compound light microscope the simple light microscope is what we call a magnifying glass you need to realize the resolution powers the definition of those and the differences between a light and electron microscope and how you would observe a specimen in a light microscope if you can understand all of that you might want to go into 2.8 where we'll actually talk about organelles and the ultra structure of the cell which is going to be rather long but hopefully it would be nice so see you guys next time until then have a great day if you are not watching this on lankintutor.com please do so as it has some tutorials and if this video helped you don't forget to share it with some of your friends